We just received a absolute mountain's worth of Halo news that I want to cover with you guys. In a recent live stream with 343, they broke down exactly what their plans are with the future moving forward with Halo as a franchise, as well as Halo Infinite. We also got great details about the MCC and Halo Infinite I want to break down for everybody in this video. So make sure if you guys like these kind of news and informational videos, that you tap that like button as it is the best way to help out the video and channel within that all famous YouTube algorithm. Plus it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. But without further ado, let's jump into all those details. Firstly, Brian Dursky to kind of go over the recent updates that have happened with the MCC, like I covered in a previous video, talking about mainly like the mod workshop with the Steam Workshop and things like that. The recent updates coming with the game and stuff like that, which is really awesome content with the MCC. Though the biggest thing, obviously, that they're actually talking about with double XP weekends happening for MCC as well. So that means you'll be earning your Spartan points a lot faster than you were previously, which is fantastic because that's been the biggest thing with me, just not being able to jump into the MCC at the moment, just because I know how much of a grind it is to get those Spartan points to get some new customization. So you guys, like double XP weekends, it's gonna be fantastic. Then 343 brought on Michael Shore to talk about Forge moving forward with season three and even some season four stuff talking about it as well. One thing talking about water placement coming in with season four, which has been a big request from the Forging community, master keyboard updates as well. Campaign AI spawning, they said it is coming into this game as well, which is gonna be absolutely necessary for this game to be really like a full fully lived out kind of forge experience that like we've never really had before like yeah everyone makes everyone's made a forge map in halo everyone's made a multiplayer map but not everyone's made like a campaign mission which currently right now is only possible within mods in the mcc but if we could do this with halo infinite i mean like we're off to the races for sure but they also talk about how difficult it is to bring in forge maps into matchmaking and i just want to let the play here to kind of really give you guys an understanding of how hard it really is for something to get in a playlist you have to think about it it's like something that players are going to experience hundreds, if not thousands of times. And so the quality bar and every element of that map goes up. You know, the layout, the sandbox, the weapon pickup locations and choices, the spawns, those need to be vetted. They need to be iterated on because you don't want spawn camping or unfair spots or anything yep. like that. And it just takes time, right? And remember, like, we're not doing this work for the players, mm -hmm. right? We're going to be reaching out to players and saying, hey, we like your map. Here's some updates. We'd like you to do the map for it to be yeah. in the playlist. And mm -hmm. then we're going to be working with them. But it's their time as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like they might have a full-time job. Um, we put something in a playlist. Like this is like earning XP towards a battle pass. So mm -hmm. like we want that experience to be really fun, really good, really smooth for players. Again, no, no griefing, no unfairness, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's why it takes time to vet that stuff. There's maps where you can get out of the environment and have an unfair advantage, right? Mm -hmm. You want to do that. Or... You want to make sure that you can't just throw the oddball down to this little place and it won't yeah. respawn. So yeah, like stuck make, there for a minute while everyone just now has to play Slayer. Performance is another concern, you know? So like if your uh, map yeah, isn't performance, rate, yeah. um, it, you know, we're going to be saying, hey, you need to optimize your map. That could mm -hmm. take time. Various fixes with Forge. We have welding fixes coming in, desync within Forge being fixed up, color fixes where sometimes just the colors don't work out properly thumbnail fixes so then you're browsing the object you can actually see what it looks like before you actually go click on the bookmark for it uh prefab fixes coming in as well they also talk about being able to forge on dev maps which looks to be coming in with season three and talking about season three we have a new map coming in which is gonna be a remake of plaza from halo 5 coming in for halo infinite being able to turn off player outlines which you mentioned in a previous video for my leak which now has been officially confirmed which is directly player feedback about halo infinite with also season three, a Forge playlist will be coming in for guys to jump in and play. Now, three, they also did mention within this live stream that they actually did try to have a Forge playlist out before the end of the year, but just a lot of technicalities, a lot of issues coming in the way of that. Season four, we see a mini game modes, as they mentioned, kind of coming in. It sounds like more like an action stack kind of playlist coming in. Uh, with also, we have the scaling effect objects like fire be coming in for season four. In season three, it sounds like with more forerunner objects, it might have some more forerunner style things coming in for Forge, which I mean, like there's so much content with Forge guys, it's insane. Next, we had Sketch sit down and chat with Sean Barron, head of the live services department of 343, to talk about the future of Halo Infinite moving forward. And the biggest thing that I was walking away with was the biggest smile saying, extra long seasons are a thing 
of the past. That's literally what they said. So no more six month seasons. It sounds like they can pretty much guarantee that with this winter update essentially being a brand new season for the most part, like a 0.5 season, if you will, with season three being, I think, the first true step forward to seasonality. Though they just seem to change that verbiage from seasonality to consistency, which I guess maybe it's more of a step where they really want to achieve rather than seasonality. It seems like maybe they were really positive enough about seasonality that they're like, yeah, we just want to be consistent with the content. We get to see what the new main menu looks like for Halo Infinite for season three. Awesome right there. Kind of a play off of what we saw from the previous image. The Watchdog Neo coding will come in with season three. This is like the true representation of Watchdog that we saw in the pre-release content. Original Watchdog will stay in the game. This will be Watchdog Neo. It was also confirmed that all cores will be free moving forward, which is gonna be awesome. But check out, did you miss this one real quick? They wanted to show the Mirage IIC, AKA the SPI armor core that they showed off previously. But did you see that? There was an extra core in there. Mid scroll right here, we can see there is the Chimera Legendary Armor Core, most likely coming in season three. This is probably going to be the Fracture Core for Halo Infinite, which is our first look at it, which is pretty freaking cool. This actually honestly reminds me a lot of saying like a Crisis Armor set. It'd be interesting to see what they do with this. It looks like to be like an extra kind of sci-fi kind of armor core coming in with season three, which is really exciting. Here's an actual look at the SPI Armor Core. I put this in slow motion on YouTube here. You get a real good good look at what this armor core actually looks like and yeah it's pretty awesome this is the armor core or armor set that was actually showcased in the original artwork for one of the original halo books finally put in to mcc but now in halo infinite which i mean come on this looks pretty awesome i'll definitely be rocking this in multiplayer matches and here we get our first real good look of the dmr aka the m93 aka the m392 bandit rifle in Halo Infinite, our first true look at it, <laughs> as we've seen plenty of leaked images about this weapon, which I've covered previously on the channel already. We actually have a look at some of the cool coatings that are coming in with this weapon as well for season three. Some unique things we haven't seen quite yet. So, I mean, come on, it's looking pretty good. We got some cool camo ones, some cool like blue looking ones and stuff like that. So nice variety coming in with season three. We have our first in-game look at the map Oasis, which is currently the in-build name of this map. They never actually said the name of the map within this live stream, but this is the BTB map coming in with season three. It looks very very familiar to saying like a deserty kind of experience that we've had previously in Halo. Uh, it seemed like there were two main lanes on this map. They didn't seem too large as well, but a little bit of extra freedom and extra space for vehicles to move around, which I actually really like. That's the biggest thing with BTP maps that are really struggling right now in Halo Infinite that it seems like each lane in BTP is so just fixated and you have like basically like a one lane highway each way on these maps. Now this one definitely seems much more open, much more like a classic BTP map, which I am all for and very excited about. It has two bases on either side, could be like a one flag CTF or a dual CTF kind of map or something like that. I, I would love to play total control on this. I think it would be a great addition as well. But yeah, this map looks absolutely incredible. And along with this gameplay, I guess you want to call it, of this map, we actually got a chance to see the shroud screen in action in this game. And here it is in action. You can see how there actually is a little bit of a delay when it comes to the shrouding screen, but the cover, what it does though, so sound is actually dampened within the screen as well. Your radar is actually kind of affected while you're standing inside of it. So you can't just camp the entire time inside and be the absolutely the advantageous position within the whole thing. Uh, projectiles can go through the shroud screen, uh, but there seems that like so there does seem to be a small delay from shooting it, hitting a surface, and then actually deploying. This is kind of helping to make it so it's not just a panic item, kind of like how it is with like the drop wall within Halo Infinite. So I really like these changes. It does seem to be a great addition, kind of almost like a digital smoke screen, if you will, to kind of either escape some situations or maybe provide some cover for your team to cross over a different section of the map. But this is going to be a great addition to the sandbox. I'm really looking forward to it. Some more points to cover here saying 343 is actually very happy with the consistent content that's gonna be coming with Halo Infinite as well. So we, we can look forward to stuff beyond season three that's gonna be coming in a timely manner that we would expect a live service game to be, which is fantastic. They also talk about how they're not gonna be waiting to like the services or any kind of features are gonna be 100% perfect, kind of like how we saw right now with the custom game browser, how it's not a perfect custom game browser. There are some bugs, but it's functional. Same thing with Forge. 
you know, giving it out to the players to be able to just jump in and play and have it functionally work as intended and let the community kind of figure out some kind of bugs. I'm sure it's kind of the way they're kind of looking into this because there's only so much internal testing you really can't do. But big thing, they actually talk about career rank coming, and they said next season or so when it comes to Halo Infinite. So my assumption that probably not season three, but maybe season four or five, we could get an actual career rank within this game as you would typically expect a Halo game to be. Kind of following in line with what I've talked about previously on this channel, saying that all signs point to the end of 2023 or the fall of 2023 to have this game really up and running to the expectations we really have for a full Halo game. Now, my biggest issue was also addressed within Halo Infinite, and that is the ping fluctuations, as there were steps forward made with this, which I've definitely noticed that it's been less drastic of these ping fluctuations happening. But they definitely still happen. And they mentioned about how we're looking to roll out some more fixes with season three and first to the North American servers. And if they can figure out what the issue is beyond that, then they'll roll out to the rest of the world, it looks like, which I mean, it does suck for the rest of the world out there. You UK players, you Australian players, you might have to still continue dealing with this ping fluctuation issue. But also keep in mind that, you know, the majority of Halo players are based in North America, so it kind of makes sense to prioritize that. We have some more Halo Reach customization coming in with a February event as well. So we have the Winter Contingency coming here at the end of December. We have Joint Ops in January, and it looks like in February, a new event, which wasn't exactly mentioned exactly how it's going to be playing out, but some more Reach customization, which is going to be fantastic. And we got our first official look at the Winter Contingency Battle Pass right here. And I did leak this out previously on the channel, guys. So as we saw, the, these items were showcased on Twitter and on Reddit. So I covered it, you know, weeks ago on the channel here. But this is our first official look at what the Winter Contingency 2 has to offer. And our first fair for hat coming in to Halo Infinite with a nice little, like, Santa Claus looking hat. So I am very happy about this. Really looking forward to having this customization come in. Like an actual true event battle pass that actually looks like something worth grinding out for and all that looks to be the future of halo infinite a lot of hopium being sucked in right here just a full <sighs> oh yes feels so good though it looks like there was an exploit recently found within halo infinite guys if you guys want to know more about it check out this video right here thank you much for watching catch you on the next one peace out